Well, I thought I'd go ahead and rebuild the rejector assembly real quick. Um, if you have one of these, a lot of times people won't when they buy a jukebox, but both of mine seem to have had them. Um, you probably are having to get into this and clean it up because if you put a quarter in or a nickel or dime, a lot of times it gets rejected. And that's because this assembly is gummed up. And there's really three little doors that open up here. Let's see if I can get them here. That um, all of this in here needs to be cleaned up real well. Once you do that, it seems to work pretty well. It isn't solid state. It has some moving parts in it. Here are the magnets assemblies. And then uh, different levels of uh, checking as they go through. And we'll kind of go through those. One thing to watch real close as you are rebuilding yours or cleaning yours up. There's this little thing right there. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little needle that sticks in. And you have to be careful not to bend it or it'll get... It just bends really simple, really easily. This little guy right here. So watch that guy closely as you clean this up. Notice I have a lot of, a lot of um, just years of use. But I did try a few, and it worked about, oh maybe, oh, with a quarter, maybe one out of ten times. So, as you notice, here is the slug. So if you got a bad quarter. Or, slug being sent through this returns it back to the user and on this side um, it comes through and whether it's a nickel dime or quarter gets slotted into different slots you can't see it real well but there are three little um, little probes that kind of stick down and as they get slotted into one of the three slots based on a nickel dime or quarter then it goes through one of those three slots and makes a contact. And then that will send a signal down this wire that will be probably on this a ground and then one of the three that got hit. And then that will signal to the jukebox to go ahead and play a proportionate amount of times. I think it's um, one for a nickel, two for a dime, and maybe five for a quarter. So... Okay, so I'll, uh, what I'm going to do here is I will just um, open this up and I'll try and crud cut all this, maybe with a little toothbrush and get in there, make sure that's all clean, and then uh, I'll fast forward so you don't have to suffer through it. If you remember back in the day... Uh, it used to be you'd go, hey, give me my quarterback. You'd put something in there and it wouldn't come out. Nothing would come out. And your whatever wrecker wouldn't play or your Coke wouldn't come out or whatever. And you'd be like, give me my quarterback. You'd be hitting the reject button here. That's what this is. This sweeps out the quarter, the, the coin that's sitting in there, stuck in the mechanism, and sends it over to the reject uh, drop. Another thought I forgot to say earlier is it's kind of nice if you have a long screwdriver like this to hold up these little doors um, while you're cleaning it. So you can kind of just stick this through just like that and it holds it up for you. I'm not quite sure why they have this uh, taped off right here. This definitely looks like it was done after the fact. This might have had something to do with maybe a special switch that they put in so that you wouldn't have to use um, coins to have this jukebox run. Um, I've seen this done. You can basically bypass this little switch. So this is a little switch in here. and Maybe if I took off this cover, it'd be more obvious. But um, as the coin passes through, it makes a contact real quick uh, between these two little metal pieces. And then that is what signals a play to be made in the system. Well, you could easily put a little switch on this to go ahead and have that play made so or have that play signaled so that's one way if you want to wire your jukebox so that you don't have to um, use quarters that you can do it and if you do it right here you can um, have it still functional for coins that go through but also when you hit that little contact switch 
it'll make contact across one of these and you you get a credit. So either one will still work because I still like if you if you have one of these, I will still like to have it working and functional just in case you want to sell it because it does make it worth a little bit more money and keeps it nice and original. So what I've done is I've uh, cleaned it all up. I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes and completely air out. Um, it's it's an okay shape. There's still some crud on it, but uh, I think it's going to be good enough for right now. And then I will give it a little lubrication. It's real light coated lubrication. And then we'll try it out and see how it works. Now we're going to show a quarter dropping through in slow motion. It will be attracted to the magnets, which will pull it to the right. And that causes it to go into the slots where it's counted as a normal good coin. Now here's a rejected one. It comes down and doesn't have as much uh, magnetic flux that affects it, so it's not pulled as much to the right, and it drops more through the center of the unit than gets picked up and out the reject slot. Well, thanks for watching this video uh, where we talked about the National Rejector. This is one actually on the Wurlitzer, and we'll go ahead and do it. Um, not only is it checking for magnetism, which we kind of looked in the video, but also it's checking for weight and size. And it actually has a little probe, too, that checks to see if it's a washer. If, if the probe can go into the little open space, then it's a washer and it stops it. So pretty amazing. It's just passing through with normal weight to make this happen in a flash. It's a pretty interesting technology from 1950. So let's try it here. You should hear it, it should go through, and then you should hear the jukebox click three or four times uh, saying it's ready. So let's see. There it is. All right, thank you.